I thought it'd be interesting to make a video showing all the treasure chest locations in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Unfortunately, I don't know the first thing about editing videos, and it'll be the first time I'm trying that. So, this isn't going to be the most polished production, most likely. Anyway, this is to demonstrate the locations of all the chests I know of, which I think is all of them. And if you don't know, the way item pickups work in this game, or, well, the whole series actually, it's they're all hidden by default. To make them appear, you have to touch a trigger point somewhere nearby, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Of course, you can use the bow's magic, which shows any chests nearby, but that's kind of useless because you need gold armor just to use it, and then you don't really need the chest much anymore. So I'm going to be showing the way to trigger these things normally, because that's what you need if you just got hit. And if you get hit, you've got no more magic and you want your armor back in a hurry. I'm starting right at the beginning. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go the wrong way. Every level has at least one chest right at the start, and for the first one, it's just in front of this tree here. Double jump will get that. Um, I'll point out, it doesn't really matter how you touch these trigger points, as long as you do. So, um, you can go from beneath or from the side, it doesn't matter as long as you get there, but it's not too forgiving, so you do need to be in the right place. The second one is on top of this pillar, the easiest way is to walk off the right side. Um, I've noticed people tend to jump off from that though, and in that case they'll miss it if they don't go back. An uh, interesting little th um, psychological thing, I guess, is people always tend to jump from high places rather than dropping down. Moving on to the next one, I always go through these cages rather than over them because it seems a lot safer to me to kill off these things so they can't keep shooting at you from behind. It's easy to get overwhelmed in this game if you leave too many things on screen. Third chest, you double jump in the centre of this kind of open area here, and that will be gold armour if you've gotten everything up until this point. The next one, you actually have to go through the cage this time. It'll trigger right around the centre. Nothing too special there. Um, you're basically guaranteed to find it if you go that way. Coming up here, these skull pillars can be really hard sometimes, especially on higher difficulty. They always fall faster. It's not a good time. You can actually skip this shortest one, which is also the most difficult because there's less space to use. And triggering the chest here, unfortunately, is on the other side of that pillar. So if you want it, you'll have to go back under it. On the other hand, if you've been getting everything up until this point, it'll only be a weapon. Which, as most likely, you probably won't need that badly. So it's a lot safer to leave it for another time. There is actually an order to what item drops when based on your armor and uh, your shield and how many chests you've opened. It's kind of complicated and kind of not, but it's definitely too complicated to try and list anything. Um, the best you can get is to know what's going to come when if you don't take any hits and find everything. Okay, so the game just gives the next one to you basically, but you can't hit it with a lot of weapons from here. And if you've gotten everything up until this point, it will be a trap that will hurt you, and on this platform that means instant death, because you'll be knocked right off. But there is a way to open it and not get hit. You have to walk up to it and step back just a little, and there will then be enough space to jump over it without being hit. It's useless, but kind of fun. Anyway, at the checkpoint, we have an example of how the chest can be signposted sometimes. This pillar in the foreground stands out a lot, and sure enough, jumping in front of it is what reveals the chest. But you'll most likely find it by jumping from the path further up. 
you found everything until now. This will be the first magician. And it's kind of fun to mess with those guys sometimes. To see what you can get away with with the reduced abilities in the cursed forms. Number 8 is basically free. I'm pretty sure you can't miss that one. It just appears behind you uh, when you go there. The next one is also basically unmissable, but there's a couple of ways to go about it. You can either jump forward and then back. Or you can jump straight across and then dodge all of this stuff that gets in the way and then go back for it afterwards. That can be risky though. Something else you can be aware of with this one is that you can use it as a stepping stone to get the money bag up there. If the chest isn't there you won't be able to reach that from below and you'll have to jump from further up the path. Which is doable, but it feels a lot more dangerous because you'll end up right next to the pit when you do that. Having said that, I don't think I've ever actually fallen in there from trying to get the money. So it might be safer than it looks. And for the last one, you go across the gap at the bottom here. I'm not even sure if you can safely get here from the upper path without running into at least something. Now, um, you want to be a little careful with this because if you get on the wrong side of it, you might end up um, kind of blocking yourself into a weapon that you might not want. It's surprisingly difficult to make it down from here safely without getting hit by some of the shots from the spore thing. Anyway, that is a total of 10 chests for Stage 1. Straight into Stage 2, and the first chest is right next to the start again. In a slightly different position from last time, and almost harder to find really, you need to jump around here. Um, people tend not to do that for some reason, they just walk and so they'll miss it. The second one is much easier to find though, as you will find that if you just walk straight. Maybe you can miss that if you try jumping on the mast from there instead of going underneath like this. I don't know, I've never tried. The next one is in another dead end, but it's a lot more dangerous. These ghosts can spawn pretty fast. And they're unpredictable too, so getting in there and getting out without getting hit can be trouble sometimes. On the zip line here, I usually prefer to go to the lowest level rather than jump straight onto the middle. If nothing else, there's another chest down here. You need to do what seems like a risky jump out over the edge and back. And for some reason, triggering that makes the mimic at the bottom of the ladder disappear. Sprite limitations, maybe? Who knows? Number five is in another dead end at the left end of the path here. This one's a bit weird because it can be empty sometimes. I'm not sure why that is. Um, sprite limitations again, possibly, with all these ghosts floating around. Next, you can either go straight ahead and jump over all this stuff, or you can just climb down the ladder. I prefer the ladder because it's much safer. Or at least it seems that way. You have to jump out a bit and back again, and the chest will appear up there. Which means you do need to go back through all this stuff but it's a lot easier to get rid of the Mimics from the right side. Still not the easiest thing though. But it's a lot easier when the axe isn't blocking your shots if you're trying to take out the Mimic. 
Well, this is where things can get kind of annoying. Because of how the water moves up and down, and with the water scrolling, and the lack of easy to identify landmarks here, finding the chests in this whole section can be a bit hit and miss. First one's not so bad, it's right next to the pillar here, at the lowest level. But for the second one, well, finding it is not as easy as it might seem sometimes. And most of all, finding it, opening it, and taking what's inside is, well, it requires some decent timing. The best way is to rush ahead to trigger it as early as possible, and then try and open it. As you can see, you only really have time for one thing at a time, and this enemy here just happens to fire at what seems like the perfect timing to get in your way while you're trying to do that. All you can really do is kind of move around, maybe jump a bit in that general area, and I hope you find it quickly. Number nine is annoying, because all these pillars kind of look the same. You have to double jump on the right side of this one. All you can really do is to try and remember it's the second pillar that has the money bag on its left instead of on the right. And it's also like kind of tall. Uh, the last one here is pretty much in the open, but it can be weirdly hard to find it sometimes. Like we're moving around and it just won't seem to appear. Very strange. Anyway, that is all for stage two. It's only the boss and more stage from here, and that's a total of 10 chests once again. I'll see you in stage 3. The first chest of stage 3 is a bit further from the start than most, but it's a lot easier to find as well. You just have to move right on the ladder here, Maybe a bit to the right, but it's if you pick up the money back, then you're going to find this, no questions. It's get a bit more interesting for the next one. You have to climb down this ladder to nowhere. Just don't climb all the way off it, because that would be bad. Next is another jump over danger. That guy underneath you shooting fire can get in the way at times. The fire can be a bit hard to anticipate at moments. Okay, the next one here is right under the fire chute on the left there, and it's the most dangerous one by far, because when those things can actually start hitting you, it's not the most definite thing in the world. Uh, they don't have to start falling before they can hit you, it seems. The timing can be pretty difficult. The easiest thing I've found to do is to walk forward a little, because only one of them can be active at the time. If you trigger the right one and then go immediately left, it should give you a little bit of time to be able to get in and out without being hit. After this we have a lot of jumping with nothing until we get to the next area. A bit like with 2-2, the chests here can be annoying because there's no real landmarks, at least not easy ones. This one is just to the left of the third gargoyle statue you find on the first tower. Number 6 is kind of a tricky one. You have to turn back from this platform that you have to jump on to progress. The detection on this is really weird for some reason. You have to kind of jump under the platform almost, and sometimes it just doesn't feel like working. Um, so it might not be worth the trouble unless you just get lucky and find it without trying. Next, you don't really have to go looking for this one. It kind of shows up by itself. Just walk right next to the second statue there.
Number eight is really imprecise. It's on the horizontal tower with these falling goblin guys. Because of the rotation, there's no easy way to tell where it is. You just kind of have to jump around a bit after you've gone a little way. Unfortunately, that one is going to be more sort of instinct and experience rather than being able to pinpoint exactly where it is. Fortunately, number nine isn't hard to find at all. You just walk ahead. If you jump around a lot, it's actually possible to miss it though, so don't get too crazy. And that's all for stage three. That was a total of nine this time. We're back to regular locations with the start of stage four. You've got to go behind the start point once again to get the first chest. Number two is also nice and easy. It should just appear by itself. Number three is also right here, but you have to be a little more daring and jump under the spikes on the corner to find it. Now here's where it gets interesting. There's a chest right here on the side end here, as you can see using the magic there, but the trigger for this one doesn't appear to be anywhere that you can find. I actually used the cheats to jump around all over the place looking for it, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And from the sounds of things, neither has anyone else. So as far as we know, the only way to trigger that is to use magic, unfortunately. As it turns out, that's actually the mystery chest that appeared in one of my old cheating videos, in case you just saw that. It showed up on top of some spikes when the level was rotated and I commented on it being weird. Maybe someone misplaced the trigger or something. Anyway, the next one here is simple enough to find. You just jump over the spikes to make it appear, but um, if you don't do it quite right, then it doesn't show up at times. So just jump back and forth a bit and you should find it. I'm just using the magic there to show that there's no chest that appears on top of those spikes. And the last one here, you just have to jump under the spiked wall here. It looks dangerous, but it's actually not at all. Just as long as you don't press the button twice, of course. Unfortunately, there are no chests at all in the next area, so we're going to be moving straight on to stage 5. Now that's a total of 6 chests, but you can only get 5 of them without the bow. Moving straight on to stage 5, the first one is the same old story, go the wrong way from the start and jump. For the second one, it's just another jump out over a pit and back. We're kind of used to those by now. Well, something you need to keep in mind at this point, though, is that those two chests are actually the only ones you'll be seeing for quite a while in this stage. So make the most of them. Finally almost time for some more treasure here in the cave with the ice vines. It's on the first of these raised platforms, but as you can see with all this stuff flying around, it's not the safest thing to get up there. Especially because when you're off the ground it makes it much harder to kill those things. Now I believe you can do a single jump in around the center of this platform and it should be enough. I'm not 100% not sure. If you do have to do a double jump, be very careful because those spikes on the ceiling are not just for decoration. The next one should be a bit easier. Um, hopefully after getting the red arrow out of the way, you just jump to the right off the edge of the platform and it's right there. Number five is nicely signposted for once. You jump up inside this ice pillar. For number six, you just want to walk on the lower path. But, well, there's an example of why I say the bow isn't the best weapon in the game. 
it, as this occasional problem of not killing things when they really need to die quickly. Next chest, number seven, is up here near the first ladder you come across. Jump toward the spike pit and back from the right side. And the last one is a bit further on, on this little floating island. You have to make a big double jump to the left to find it. Uh, it's worth noting that once you set foot on the main land off to the right, where the final ladder is, the screen will actually lock. You won't be able to go back much further than that from then on. And if you haven't revealed the chest by then, you won't be able to find it anymore. If you have revealed it but not opened it, though, you'll still be able to get to it. And that's a total of eight chests for stage five. Stage six, the first chest is right in front of you. Just jump straight ahead and it'll show up. Now, by the way, this level is where you do the sort of most famous speedrun strat of this game where you skip the ladders and stuff at the very top of the level. Uh, from down here you need to get the red aroma to hit you at the mm, almost top of a jump. It's not too strict as you can see. The knockback will give you a little extra height and knock you up, up to the ledge there. second chest is a bit further up and it's basically free. It just shows up when you walk up the corridor there and that's probably a good thing considering all the red aromas in this stage. You probably need all the help you can get to make things a bit easier. Still, number three isn't quite so easy. You have to double jump up against the wall there. Which isn't a particular obvious thing to want to do. Fourth chest kind of tucked away under there. It's not too bad, but as usual, it's easy to miss if you don't think to go underneath. And number five, though, no one ever seems to find. You have to jump back over the gap after you come up there. It's not even that well hidden by the game standards. It's just kind of frustrating because I keep seeing people going up and fighting this boss with no armor when they could have had some if they'd only looked for that. I don't know. Anyway, there's only five chests here, but it is the shortest stage after all. You can't say they don't change things up. This time, for the first chest, you don't go back or forwards. Just jump straight up. Opening it might not be the best idea though, depending on what happens. It's basically guaranteed to be a weapon if you do it straight away, and if you fall down there from above, for example uh, walking off the right side of this platform, you'll land directly on top of that, losing whatever weapon you were holding at the time. There's not many situations where that's not going to end up hurting you somehow. Especially if you have a certain item needed to finish the game. Next chest is at the top of the shaft and turns up straight away. Number three is right beside it, but you have to jump from up there. And just like the one from below, it's possible to get knocked into that from above. It's a lot easier to do so actually with this guy around because the upper edge will kind of um, push you into it. It's kind of strange there's two things like that. I get the feeling they designed it on purpose to try and make you lose the bracelet if you had it. There's yet another one in the area. 
it's quite well planned out actually because there's just enough for you to manage to get the bracelet if you started the stage without it. So you won't be uh, locked in here if you end up losing it somehow. Number 5 is quite nice because it doesn't show up with magic at all. You can use the bow magic there all day and it just won't show up. You've just got to jump from the second step to the right there. And it will turn up, but uh, for some reason the Seeker magic doesn't work on it, so a lot of people, including me, for the longest time didn't know about that one at all. Number 6 is under the Mimic here, but going for it can be kind of risky with all these ghosts spawning all over the place, especially if you accidentally activate the Mimic and it's shooting at you as well. I prefer to just try and run through here so I don't get overwhelmed. The very last chest in the game is a real sneaky one. You have to jump down to the left from up there, and sometimes it just doesn't want to appear, so it seems to be quite precise. Considering you have to go all the way back down from almost at the top, it might not really be worth it. And by the way, that one doesn't appear with the bow magic either. So there's some real strange things going on with this final area of the game. And that makes a total of seven chests in stage seven, making a grand total of 55 throughout the entire game. Now, you're not going to need all of those, certainly, but it's definitely going to be helpful to know where they are, I think. And that means that's basically all for this video. Sadly I can't tell you about the chests in the alternate stages of the Game Boy Advance version because I don't know them well enough myself and there aren't really any resources I could use to uh, help make a video like that. Which is kind of unfortunate because something like that you could actually use a sort of definitive source for this stuff but um, I wouldn't feel comfortable making a video like that when I didn't know myself. What I can do, on the other hand, is clear up another little mystery about this game. Um, for the longest time, there have been rumours of a 1-up item in this game. An extra life pickup. Um, people would keep saying there was one, maybe it showed up in some player guides or whatever but no one ever seemed to be able to actually find it anywhere in the game. It seemed almost like a myth of some kind, an urban legend. Well, the truth is, that item does actually exist, um, and it wasn't removed or dummied out or anything like that. Uh, the secret there lies in the other type of treasure in this game, which is the pots carried by spawning enemies. Um, of most of these randomly spawning enemies in the game, every third one will be carrying a pot. If you kill that enemy, it will drop the pot, which then leads to an item. Now, like the treasure chests, it um, might seem random, but it's actually not. More or less, every third item that drops from a pot will be a weapon, and the others will be these little score items you see here that give you mostly useless points and nothing else. That's um, simple enough, really. The secret comes from if you don't move on like you're supposed to. If you just stay around and keep killing these things for way too long, eventually one of them is going to drop that fabled one up. And that, in fact, isn't random either, and actually explains why no one ever saw this item in the game. Because, to be exact, you need to open 32 pots in total to get that extra life. And since they only appear on every third enemy, that's a minimum of 96 kills. Um, 
and bear in mind that these spawning enemies don't really persist outside of a few areas, so you've got to just sit in one place killing things for a really long time. Uh, even on stage one, which has the zombies all through the first part, um, you're not going to be getting enough to naturally make it all the way to 32. And if you do this, well, you're not going to have time to make it to the next checkpoint because of the time limit, which is something that is basically never a factor anywhere else in the game except for the very last level. So you might be able to get that one up, but good luck keeping it. We're just going to fast forward through the rest of this because, yes, it has taken this long. And there it is at last, the mythical one-up. It really exists, and we have 30 seconds to beat all of stage one. Yeah, good luck with that. Let's just see how far we get. Anyway, this has been a hopefully informative video of Super Golds and Ghosts this time, instead of the weird silly stuff I did before. I'm sure somebody out there has already done a video like this much better than I did, but... Um, well, let's just say that it's practice, yeah. That sounds good. Maybe someone will find it useful. Anyway, that's that.